Hello everyone, my name is Pierre Charbonneau, I'm a senior IT consultant and the author on Java e support patterns.blogspot.com. Today's session will be first deal with a series that will teach you how to perform a thread dump analysis, which is a very crucial skill for any individual uh, involved in production support or even if you're involved in delivery and load testing uh, initiatives. So today's session will teach you basically how you can analyze a thread dump for a hotspot GVM format. Yeah, regardless of the version, typically 1.6 plus. And at the beginning, we'll basically give you an overview how you can do the overall high level analysis. And then the thread dump that we will review today will actually show you how you can detect Java heat depletion. So sometimes, as, as you will see, this type of problem will, tra will generate thread surge. And then you, you should be able, af after the end of the session, to be able to detect that also in your environment. Here's the thread dump that we'll review today. As you may have seen from my past articles, a thread dump is a very crucial piece of data, right? Because it's a basically a snapshot of all the thread executing from the JVM. And this is the exact type of thread that you will get. And typically, the, the JVM is obtained if you're running on a Unix environment, you'll need to generate it either with a kill minus three, it's one way. You can use JSTAC as well. Or if you're running on WebLogic, for example, you can also generate ThreadDump directly from the console. So there's a few ways to generate ThreadDump. Uh, native ThreadDump is preferable, like kill minus three. So you get access to all the native information as well. So if you're working with a hotspot GVM, this is a typical format that you will get. In our example, the ThreadDump was generated from Oracle Service Bus environment, which is why you see WebLogic in the actual thread. So let me explain you how typically you will do an, an analysis. So the, the ThreadDump hotspot is fairly uh, straightforward. So you basically have a listing of all the created threads or the running thread in the GVM. And at the very bottom of the ThreadDump, you will also get the detail from the Java heap. The data is available since hotpot, uh, sorry, hotspot version 1.6, which is very useful because you get the breakdown in a one-time snapshot to get all the running threads and you get the utilization in your Java heap. And as you, we will see today, this is very crucial data as well, so you can draw some straight correlation depending on what type of problem you're dealing with. Okay. So I'm going to share with you typically how I analyze the thread them. As you can see, I don't use any tool. Uh, there's some tools you can use out there like TDE or a few others. And they are good at formatting the thread dump and highlighting you some of the block thread and so on. But I, I still recommend you that you learn to analyze the raw data. As you will see, uh, personally, I've been analyzing thread dump since the last 10 years. And I, and I really prefer to analyze it uh, just using a simple editor with uh, raw data. Okay. So first thing to be able to do is to be able to quickly differentiate healthy threads versus non-healthy thread. So what does this mean, right? So <clears throat> healthy thread means it's a thread which is waiting to execute a request, right? Basically a thread which has nothing to do for now. Non-healthy thread or stock thread or slow thread is basically a thread that you see actually executing a transaction, like this one. And, and, and basically this is where we, you have to start to worry. So you have to be able, as a starting point, to differentiate these threads. So you don't want to spend time, uh, like man, two minutes, analyzing each single thread. Oh yeah, what it does and what it does. You need to be able to quickly realize the, these threads. So you just focus on the actual thread or doing an actual task. And then quickly you'll, you start analyzing a few of these threads. And the goal is to establish, attempt to establish or identify a pattern. Okay, this is really key. You don't want to spend two hours analyzing that thread dump. You want to analyze a few threads and then determine a pattern. And then once, once you figure out the pattern, then you can probably move quickly to the rest of the thread dump and then just confirm yeah, that, that you're on the right track. Okay? And this is what will allow you to pinpoint the root cause. And the, the tricky part of the thread dump is that at some point you'll be able to analyze the thread dump, but the, the key experience will come for you to be able to quickly detect the, the actual patterns. So let's do the analysis in this case. So let's assume that you're in charge and you're dealing with Oracle Service Bus Slowdown, a, a major thread uh, surge in this case. We, we can see we have a lot, a lot of threads doing a lot of tasks, right? 
stock thread, stock thread all over there, stock thread all over the place, right? So obviously you start from the top. Now the key analysis will be from the stack trace. Okay. Web logic, if you're using a web logic, it will give you also the state of the thread. Like in this case, web logic will show you a standby or running thread. Stuck means that WebLogic detected that the thread is taking more than two or a few minutes to complete as per your configuration. So this is typically a thread which is stuck in this condition for a few minutes. This is really not good, right? Because this is exactly what you want to avoid. The rest of the information, right? So that's the trend name, quite typical for WebLogic, right? With the, the state, as I said. And the rest of the information is native information for the thread. And this is typically crucial data if you want to correlate uh, which thread are using too much CPU, but we won't cover this uh, today. Okay, today we'll just focus on that high level analysis. The, the key analysis uh, aspect is the stack trace. Okay, similar to what you're used to in um, when you basically uh, are reading logs from your application or a stack trace or an exception, right? You always have to read the stack trace from bottom up. Right, the stack trace is pretty much the execution path of uh, that thread or following an error at a given time. In the context of a thread dump, the stack trace is the actual execution path from the thread until the first line, which basically means that the current task that the thread is attempting to complete. Okay, so you you always have to read from bottom up, and then you have to, as I said, establish pattern. So in this case, let's do the analysis. At this case, we can see it's a WebLogic thread. The thread is, is executing a request. Now it's trying to execute a timer. Timer expired. So basically, on the um, on the Oracle service bus, there is some internal monitoring. So that's why you see this type of thread on service bus, because there is some uh, in background mon monitoring or collector going going on. And then, but then if we look at the collector, let's see where the thread is now waiting. You see, log. Logging service log log. You look at this. It means that WebLogic or Service Bus internally just trying to collect the information from Service Bus and then look at what's happening. It's waiting to acquire a lock. So right now this thread is block. It is attempting to acquire a lock on this particular ob object, right? We can see that here. So far so good. You can keep that in mind. Flat lock or common issues. Uh, but as I said, the goal is to try to identify a pattern. So, so far, we know we have one thread collector, which is, for some reason, is unable to get a log for uh, from the logger, which is a bit surprising because typically that processing should be uh, uh, extremely fast, right? So let let's move on, right? So this thread, from a web logic perspective, it's not doing anything. How do I know that? Well, this is what you have you have to learn, right? You have to learn depending on which uh, container you're using. If you're using WebLogic, you see wait for request. That's the method in the WebLogic thread that you have to realize that this thread is not doing anything. It's sitting there and waiting. It's waiting from the WebLogic kernel to assign it a request, right? So this thread is what I, I call healthy. It's not doing anything. So you don't even bother looking at it. Okay, as, as soon as you see that, you skip it. Now this one, thread. 409. Look at this. Now we, we quickly move right to the pattern. Now we see, look, same pattern, you see? Collector, logger, waiting to acquire a flat lock. You see that, right? So far we have two threads trying to wait on the same object lock, right? We can see that here. Okay, good. So we start to see a pattern, you see that? Look at this. For wait, same, same thing. It's trying to acquire a flat lock on a console handler to an internal logging. Again, same, same stack trace. You see that? So we have quite a few, right? So this is already suspicious, right? Um, you know, it's giving you some... So what? once you figure out a pattern like this, you can actually search for the object ID, right? And then you, you will be able to see we have quite a few waiting to lock, right? We can see where there's quite a few threads trying to lock this object, right? It's, it's major. And then what you can simply do is search for which thread, right, is owning, you see? By just looking at the lock, you see that's typically what you get from hotspot. For flat locks, you see the actual thread waiting for a particular object ID on the object monitor, right? That's a flat lock or synchronize, if you prefer, in a Java code. Then you search for the culprit. You see, that's 
we just found it here. Then you analyze the stack trace from this one here. Right? So let's look at this thread. You can see this thread is basically just trying to some T tree log info on stock thread. You see it's just some internal logging that WebLogic is trying to do. This should acquire the lock on this object. Right? And we already saw we have many threads waiting from that object. And then if you look at what the thread is doing next, it's just trying to do some logging information, right? And then if you look at it, you'll be able to see that. Now the question is what this thread is doing, right? As you can see again, this is some of internal logging request. And then the thread is trying to basically load some sort of resource bundle. And then it's trying to do a loading, a class loading call. So this is very surprising, right? So we get the thread chain because of a logger in turn to WebLogic, and then we get the culprit thread, which is also stuck, which is simply trying to load a class in a class loader. Well, this is this is a key finding, okay? Because class loader typically is extremely fast. So what you need to understand is that as soon as you see something like this, as when you start to see slowdown, even for class loader calls, then it means typically that you're dealing with overall contention, okay? And overall contention within the JVM, and and what can trigger that? What you will learn with more experience, of what will trigger that type of contention is typically associated with JVM or Java heat problem, or it could be very high CPU happening on your server or a few threads spinning and using too much CPU and causing overall contention. So that's a key finding. Once you find that, as you can see, we spend a few minutes, then you will move next and then you scroll the rest of the thread and you determine, yeah, basically, if you start to see other pattern like this around logger, right? Still logger. Then you, here you see, we see some stuck thread just trying to initialize some object. You can see that right? that thread is stuck. You're just trying to initialize some object in memory. So that's giving you a hint that there is contention. So at this point, you should stop your thread analysis right here, and you need to do a quick assessment of your Java heap, right? Because typically thread dump will show you the culprit, but it's not the only data point required. You need to consolidate other data points as well. So once you do something like this, do a quick assessment, at least to rule out if you're dealing with a Java E problem before you do too much deep dive in a thread dump. And the good news is, as I explained, the thread dump in hotspot 1.6 has all the detail. So you can get thread dump, all the snapshot, and you get the story right also from a Java E point of view. Now, since we found contention within class loading and logging, this is the typically a type of processing which will suffer at first when dealing with JVM issue. Now, question is, are we dealing with a Java heap problem? Let's do the assessment now. So, that uh, that pretty much the environment is running the concurrent collector. So that's why you see all the parallel JC, and then you, this is why you will see a young gen space here, and the old gen space here, right? The perm gen also, which is also uh, applicable for JDK 1.6. So, if you look at the Yarn Gen space, this one, not too much of a concern. You see that the actual space that we have is not that big a deal. We are only using about 170 megs out of the 160 meg or something. So, it's not, the Yarn Gen is not really an issue in this case. Now, let's move to the old Gen. Total capacity, right? You see that? 1.4 gig, right? Use, oh. Look how much use, almost 1.4 gig. You see that? 99% use. So we exactly found the problem, right? So at that time of the snapshot, we basically, if we go back at the facts, major contention with internal logger of logic, which is very suspicious. Then we have a called print thread showing contention, trying to do class loading call, which as I said is typically a symptom of contention. Either the GVM, disk, CPU, and so on. So yeah, this is where you have to start to worry. Then you do the quick assessment on GVM, and then we have a perfect match here. 
So why do you see that? Well, the reason is that as soon as the old gen will reach 99%, at some point the JVM will go in trashing mode, which means you will see excessive garbage collection. So these threads will be firing over and over and over, causing a lot of JVM pause time. And since the JVM is triggering a lot of pause time, the actual threads get interrupted, right? Uh, and this is why you start to see all the slowdown or contention within computing tasks, in memory computing tasks, right? That's why you see pattern which doesn't make sense like this. This is a key problem pattern. You will always see that when you start to deal with Java problem. You will see processing like uh, class loading, XML parsing, logging show, uh, shown in the thread dump. And then this is why it's very important that you do an assessment on your Java heap. So again, the thread dump analysis will bring you to that. It's possible you, do, you can do that the other way around. It's possible you will detect a Java heap problem. And then you can analyze the thread dump to un understand the, the impact. But in this case, we did the other way around. So at least it's giving you some background when you do thread dump. Make sure you also do a health assessment of your Java heap. This is one way to do it, enabling Verbo GC or using a monitoring tool like GVisual VM or any commercial tool would do as well. Okay. So I hope you appreciated that uh, Tradem analysis on the hotspot. Like I said, it's just one first do of a series. That problem pattern was about Java heap depletion and how to detect that from the thread dump. Next session, we'll be covering much more problem cases. So I hope you did enjoy it and have a good day.